How are you? I'm great, thank you. Oh, it's so good to have you. You remind me of a better-looking sting. That's what I think when I look at you. <laughs> Don't you think? Do you ever... You know, um, in 19, about 1972, a friend of mine came to me and said, you know, there's this group called Police. I said, I never heard of this group. What the, what? They said, oh, no, the, the singer is great. He looks just like you. Right. And now he, now, he, now I look like him, right? No. <laughs> oh, okay. You still have it. You still have it. Now, you, you grew up in, in where? In, in Liverpool? Yeah. Were you there when the whole Beatles thing was taken off? Oh, yes. And... Yes, yes, I was indeed. I went down to see them at the Cavern Club. Uh, a, a number of times, half a dozen times, and the great John Lennon banging away and Paul McCartney. They Did didn't you ever have... get to hang out with those guys? Was it, were you starting to come up in the acting world at that no, point? No, no, not at all. Oh. No, I was selling coffee when I, I, I drove um, into Leeds in Yorkshire, and that was my territory, selling coffee. I had the samples in the back of the car. And Sample coffee? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, coffee, to sell coffee in Leeds is like selling you know, uh, ice cubes in Alaska, because uh, uh. they drink tea, the English. You know? Oh, I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they they have a queen there, too, from That's what it. I understand. They have a lot, a lot more than one queen, <laughs> believe me. Uh, anyway, Touché, my friend. Touché. Anyway, this policeman stopped me and said, um, I'm sorry, sir, you can't drive down here. I said, but that's my, my hotel's down here, the constable. He said, no, we have, the Beatles are in town, we're blocking up all the city. I said, the Silver Beetles? No, the Beatles, sir. Beatles. Who were the Silver Beetles? The, the, when I saw them, they were called the Silver Beetles. Ah. But then the, the next time I went, the next week, the, the silver had been uh, painted over on the right. drum. You know? And George Best was left behind, and Ringo stepped in, and that was the end of it. Yeah. So right. you, weren't, you weren't sort of the... Because I, I look at you as sort of a menacing fellow. The first time I saw you was Clockwork Orange. A menacing fellow? No, not now, because no. I heard the whole coffee story. Now I think, oh, you're very nice. <laughs> But before, that's, that's a really terrifying movie, and that was, my, that was the first time I'd ever seen you, and that was a really... Uh... Yes, well, it was a, an amazing film in many ways. Wonderful um, film, yeah, absolutely. Stanley Kubrick, of course, is a wonderful, wonderful director, and uh, besides being a very strange man, and uh, <laughs> still a wonderful director. Is he an odd guy? Well, you'd have to be an odd guy to make a movie like Clockwork Orange, wouldn't you? You made a movie like Clockwork well, Orange. Well, I am very odd, of course. <laughs> oh, all right. But I admit it. Maybe that's where he kind of makes his mistake. Right, that's where it separates. Did you ever, when you watched that, did you get scared of yourself at any point? Did you think, oh my God, I can't believe I'm, I'm doing this stuff? No, there was a, a time, uh, I hadn't seen the film in 10 years, and, right. and it was uh, in Los Angeles, I think in about 1980, when they played it, a late night show, and um, a group of friends uh, sat around, it was on at midnight, so we sat around uh, in our bedroom watching it, and it was a rented house, and they, we watched this film, and it was kind of, you know, it's a wonderful film, but I hadn't seen it for 10 years, so a lot, right. a lot of things I'd forgotten. And I, I got up uh, to open a sliding glass door and saw the reflection of Alex in that door and, and screamed, you know, ah! Because I just watched this movie, and there right, was Alex. Right, and you were scaring yourself. <laughs> you know, I scared myself. You know what I used to do after watching the movie? I'd, I'd put on my long johns and a jock strap and a bowler, and I'd just walk around my house, you know, just... <laughs> I swear to God, you're you're the first guest we've ever in the rain. exactly. You're the first guest we've ever had on that I used to dress as for Halloween. I used to go out as as Alex all the time. Yep. And then I would uh, get my ass kicked by some kids dressed as the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So you know, it never worked out for me. Um, Caligula is another one I wanted to talk about. If you wanna, I don't mean to bring up all the. No. Uh, yes. That. Well, that was a very strange movie in a way because, you know, Gore Vidal wrote the original script. And right. it was actually, the title of Caligula was called Gore Vidal's Caligula. Now, Gore Vidal had a row with the producers and decided to take his name off. But by this time, of course, we were already three months into shooting the movie. And I remember calling up Gore Vidal and saying, Gore, you know, I can't take my name off it. I'm stuck here doing this stuff. Right. And of course, uh, he said, well, sorry, dear boy, I can't, you know, and he gave them his percentage back, I believe, so... I... That's, you must be really bummed out when you do that. Do you ever yeah. see Caligula at home and then look in the mirror and see Caligula and go, Wow! <laughs> I'm wearing no, a coat. No, now. no, uh, It's strange. I couldn't see that film for a while because, you know, they added all the graphic porn pornography... Yes, I remember. ...two years later. And... <laughs> I, uh, I remember that. I have to tell you, my mom saw that movie. She went to Caligula thinking it was like Ben-Hur, like a biblical epic. Of course. 
She came home, I've never seen that look on anyone's face before. She just, she just came home like this. So she saw the X-rated version then, did she? Twice. No, she, uh, <laughs> she did see it once. Look at this. She saw it once. Well, I saw, um, I was in New York and saw John Gielgud wandering up Third Avenue, and uh, he was shooting Arthur at the right. time. And he said, oh, oh, Malcolm, Malcolm, my God, have you seen Caligula? And I said, John, no, I haven't. I mean, I had such a terrible time with this, I, I couldn't possibly go. He said, my dear boy, it's fabulous. I've seen it twice. <laughs> <laughs> Just thinking of John Gielgud in the thing, oh, that's nice. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We're going to be back with more Malcolm and Dalvin. Back chips, greasy mess. The crumb The Pringles Ridge is it. The John Stewart Show is brought to you by Pringles. So fresh, once you pop, you can't stop. Welcome back, everyone. Still to come tonight. Natalie Portman from the new movie, The Professional, filmmaker Jessica Yu, and musical guest Foo Schnickens will be out later on, so... Foo Schnickens! From Flatbush. From Flatbush. Well done, Malcolm. I you, sir, are, are living in... Where are you living now? California? Yes. You surviving all the craziness out there? The... Just about. I live in a beautiful town near Santa Barbara, so... Very nice. It's Shangri-La. Family man now? Do you have a... Family man, yes. Got my two kids. That's lovely. In fact, um... Saturday, they're in a big playoffs Saturday, uh, trying to get into the playoffs, actually. And, and uh, my daughter had a big soccer game last night. So I'm hoping she won. I didn't speak to her today, so... I thought two to one, she won. Oh, yes, you. excellent. The whole thing. She scored twice. She's doing very well. Right. No, I don't know. It's so surprising to me. You've had such a storied life. It's, it's so interesting. In our conversation earlier, you brought uh, what up... What life? Uh, storied. A storied. Right. Yeah. What did you think I said? Something else. Something else. I'm quickly rhyming in my head right now, trying sorted. to figure out. I thought you said sordid. Oh, no, not no, sordid no, no, at no. all. No, not at all. That's my family, my friend. <laughs> um, but it's so, you know, in our conversation, Kubrick and Gore Vidal and, and all these amazing people. I'm sorry if I was name dropping. It's, uh... Oh, listen, I do. T Soupy Sales I've worked with. I believe me. Well, Soupy, I've worked with him, too. No, you haven't. I'm serious. I, I did his uh, television show. I was on a, a television show with him in 1969. Uh, I was selling, um, I think, Coffee. or Oh Lucky Man, you know, one of my movies. Oh, okay. What, what did he have? Was it like a pie in the face show? It was in New York. On? No, he was, um, you know, he was just doing uh, an interview show, and I came onto this show, and I thought, who the hell is this? This is so... And, of course, I was very English then. Now I'm more mid-Atlantic. Oh, I like see. That. Man of the world now. When did you then become mid-Atlantic, my friend? Oh, it took about 20 years. Yeah. Do you get back to England very often? Do you, do you go no, back? No, not and very often. Visit the Royal. Well, my mum uh, lives there still, and but uh, I'm actually going over tomorrow to um, the memorial service for Lindsay Anderson, who was a great friend of mine and oh. alas died a couple of months ago. But, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Great director. So you'll, you'll head back to England uh, for yes. a little bit. Will you see your, your folks when you go back there? Your mom? Oh yes, I'll be staying with my mom. Did she ever see Caligula? That is the one movie she missed. Oh. <laughs> but she did see Clockwork Orange, and and. Uh, she saw it, she came to the premiere, and uh, so afterwards in the car, she said, uh, why do you play such horrible men? <laughs> I said, Mom, you know, I mean, the guy's not that horrible. He just, you know, had a, an unhappy childhood, you know. I said, oh, he's so horrible. Every time I see you, you're playing a horrible man. But um, there was a couple of movies along the way where she liked, she liked. Yeah, so you've but got not many, respect. not many. It's tough with your mom, no matter how old you get, whatever. My mom, she'll watch the show, and I'll call her, and say, how'd you like it? And she'll say, you wore a lovely sweater, you know, and that's it, you know. Yeah, well, she won't say that tomorrow, will she? <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well, I, I thought we had to dress up for this show. I'm sorry, I'm a little overdressed. Man, you know what's that? I knitted this myself. <laughs> yeah. now, I, now I feel terrible. Now, what's going on with you? You're on the cutting edge of technology as well. I you're, am indeed. Yes, I'm in two science fiction movies this year. There's one that opens... I think tomorrow or Friday. Right. And the other one is called Tank Girl. Oh, okay. So you're in Tank Girl and then not Tank Girl. Uh, and then not Tank Girl. Yes, okay. the other one. Very nice. And the other one, we, we, you know, we, we don't really have to talk about that much, but I play two fairly heavy characters. Villains again. Villains, yes. Well, the one that's not Tank Girl is not so much a villain, really. It's a, sort <coughs> of a man who's obsessed. It's like a drug addict, really. Yeah. Right. And, uh, but the Tank Girl is, is, a, is a villain, yes. That's more of a Mad Max kind of scenario. Yes, yes. It's a, it's a big comic strip, a huge cartoon in 
Europe, in England. Oh, yeah. You don't play the... It's uh, Tank Girl is the kangaroo people, and the, she has... That's right. Uh, Ice-T plays one of those. Ice-T plays the a kangaroo. The Rippers. Right. Yeah. He was out here, and Lori Petty was out here. She plays Tank Girl. She does, and she's brilliant. Oh, really? Yes, she is. Wonderful actress. And in uh, Not Tank Girl, are there any kangaroos? Or, uh... No kangaroos. There are some um, weird-looking gentlemen and two gorgeous girls, mm. but they've got rotten teeth and they kind of smell a bit. <laughs> but all you see are... Uh, gorgeous girls with rotten teeth yes. and they smell a bit. Wait, I'm having a prom flashback. Are you, are you Hold getting... on. Are you getting the movie? I am getting the movie in a thing. You've also got... What is this new interactive uh, CD-ROM thing that you got? It's called uh, Wing Commander 3. Do you know, how do you know about that? Because I read the notes that they oh hand me. Oh, my God. Look at this. <laughs> Here's, yeah, this is it. This is Wing Commander 3. They just went to it. Uh, now, this is, it looks huge. This is a uh, CD. It CDs. is huge. 70 bucks. And are you serious? Oh, unbelievable. I won't be able to get the Gatlin Brothers set now. <laughs> all right. So this is, uh, you get this and you get all the new technology. It's like yeah. a movie. Yeah, it's like a movie. We shot it. I wanted to do it because I wanted to see what this cutting edge of the movie business was like. And right. This is it. You... The new technology. Can we show a quick clip? Oh, yeah, I'd love to see it. We've got a quick clip. This is, uh, it's Wing Commander 3. This is the newest in interactive computer technology starring Malcolm and Dow. I think you're going to be blown away. Take a quick look. I tell you, that'll knock you out. Love you, man. I have to tell you, it is, a, it is an absolute pleasure to meet you. I've enjoyed your movies for years and thank years, you, and thank you so much for coming by. Nice to see you. Malcolm McDowell, everybody. Coming up, Natalie Portman. We will be back after this. We'll see you in a bit.